all this is dr mubeen sayed from drbeen.com welcome to one more show so the discussion today is very important it is about the intermittent fasting or prolonged fasting or fasting in general and the effect of fasting i'm going to be specific today for one area the effect of fasting for immune system damage control and immune system dysregulation control and immune system restoration these are potential possibilities and we are going to look at the mechanisms that help with that um before we start i can actually give you an idea of what to expect when you read the papers that i would show here sometimes it becomes too jargony and be- difficult to catch so if we are starving then what happens is our body would start looking for available glucose in the circulation and we will use that up then our body would still start searching for more glucose and if it finds that for example in the liver there is some stored glucose it would use that our muscles also have stored glucose they can use that but they do not give that glucose to the remaining tissues only liver does that and muscles always get brain and muscles get priority brain has to think about us about how to get out of the situation and the muscles have to move us towards food or take us away from the area of a problem so after the glucose is are used the stores then our body starts using or or after in parallel i'm just talking in more general terms here not medical exact mechanism uh our body starts mobilizing fats and starts using fats and it, it would start converting them into ketone bodies it would start using those if we still do not have food then our body would start breaking down our muscles and by that time we would actually be in trouble as well and might die if we do not get support the important mechanism to consider here is we will start using up things in us because we are not able to get anything from outside that is what a cell does when the cell is starving when the cell is fasting the cell looks inside of itself and says do i have things within me that i can break down to make my uh, nutrients that i can use to keep myself alive and so it would start picking up tiny things within the cell and breaking them down this phenomena this process is called autophagy eating itself and when autophagy occurs if the cell continues to get the food afterwards it might restore otherwise it might even die dying of a cell is not necessarily always bad normally those cells would die first that were sick cells that were damaged cells or that were unnecessarily sitting and being more active immune cells are known to cause autoimmune diseases and just sitting there and being just active unnecessarily so those cells would die first which is a good thing and secondly when a set of cells die then the bone marrow cells the stem cells living in the bone marrow the parent cells the cells that are um that can renew themselves and that can renew other that can produce other cells those cells receive a message that hey we have less let's say wbc wbcs are less rbcs are less and those stem cells would start making new cells so now what you have done is you have exchanged damaged cells for new fresh cells and there is one more interesting thing when a cell is starving when a cell is fasting and it is picking up things from inside of it and eating it up guess what if there is something bad sitting in there a virus hiding in there if the cell is capable of still doing autophagy normally virus would come in and block the autophagy it would come in and block the cellular mechanism cell even if it wants to do something it cannot do it so imagine if that is not the case maybe the remnants of the virus is there let's say spike protein is sitting in a cell i'm just using that as an example and the cell is in the autophagy state it's going to break that thing down to eat it up to use it for nutrition it's going to burn it 
And so in this process, I'll show you the studies, they say that in the process of autophagy, the cell actually looks inside and takes the antigens that may be sitting there, breaks them down and presents them on the surface. And so it improves the immune system. That thing that was hiding in there, that thing the cell was not able to present outwards, all of a sudden, the cell has to break it down. And when the cell is going to break it down, it is mandatory for the cell normally to display the broken pieces, parts, some of those broken pieces. So something that was not being presented is now being presented on the cell's surface. An immune system would become better with that. Can you imagine how beautiful these mechanisms are? So let's look at these studies and mechanisms. I think today's lecture is something to enjoy. You would actually look at the lecture, you would look at how fascinating this world is, and I think you would enjoy the mechanism. So once again, if you are going to fast, please speak with your doctor. They have to look at your state, your comorbidities, and then decide how much. So this is drbean.com. In the link, in the description, there is a link to Dr. Bean videos about a thousand of them at a very, very inexpensive price. So check that out. This is Cool Beans Cafe. This is where we go for chit-chat after we have done, we are done with this lecture. So you can just go to YouTube and look for Cool Beans Cafe live and we would normally be there. This is a very, very interesting study. This study is actually 2014, I believe. Yes, so June 5, 2014. And they have talked about some beautiful mechanisms, and that's what we'll talk about. And then there are some supporting references. This is also a very interesting study. Prolonged fasting reduces IGF and PKA to promote hematopoietic stem cell-based regeneration and reverse immunosuppression. This is also very important. They say the intermittent fasting for chemotherapy. So patients who are going to go to chemotherapy or have gone through the chemotherapy and their immune system may not be as uh, refined and as polished, it may have some damaged cells here and there. Intermittent fasting actually helps restore that immune system decently. So these are those studies here. So here saying no to drugs, fasting protects hematopoietic stem cells from chemotherapy and aging. And then there are some more uh, links here. So with this, let's go to my diagrams. So these are the gifts for humanity so the little cartoon I made here, don't feed the cells. And the cell is sitting there with its little bowl and saying, food, please. So here, these are the gifts of humanity. Let's start a discussion. Intermittent fasting, prolonged fasting, and the immune system outcomes. Fasting or starving, mainly, so in the context of immune system, is protective against damaged immune cells. And I have already done the summary, that initial nine minutes. So now it is just a detail of that. And then it induces regeneration. So when the immune cells are dead, then of course the new cells need to be made. So WBC count will go down and the WBC count will come back up. And, but when it will come back up, there will be nice new, brand new cells. And if the previous cells... The damaged cells, the older cells, they have picked up things and now they're living with those things and they're, they have trash in them. These cells would be recycled and the new cells that would be formed will not have that baggage. And here in that study that we'll discuss, they talk about immune system restoration of, after chemotherapy, but really other studies say immune system restoration or regeneration of cells and removal of the damaged cells after any immune system problem, dysregulation by viruses or autoimmunity and so on. So what happens is fasting promotes death of cells. So we discussed that before. So WBC count would go down. When the WBC count will go down, that would trigger the stem cells in the bone marrows to make more cells. So there are more baby cells and these cells are going to be working. What this does is, according to the study, and I'll go back to that study and go over that, improved chemotherapy tolerance. If we go here for a second, and I look for, 
here this part <coughs> it says this study has major implications for healthier aging in which immune system decline contributes to increased susceptibility to disease as people age by outlining how prolonged fasting cycles periods of no food for 2 to 4 days at a time over the course of 6 months kill older and damaged immune cells and generate new ones the research also has implications for chemotherapy tolerance and for those with a wide range of immune system deficiencies including autoimmune disorders and the researcher said we could not predict that prolonged fasting would have such a remarkable effect in promoting stem cell based regeneration of the hematopoietic system and i'll explain what that is for the blood system so they say that chemotherapy tolerance improves immunodeficiency improves improved autoimmunity why because we are clearing out the cells and we're making new cells and the new cells may not be that way now there is one more thing and this is a blue box that is my comment in here the functioning aggressive cells immune cells for let's say the cells that are causing cytokine storms or that are just making antibodies without even in need or cytotoxic cells that are just continuing to do a uh, damage or cells that are just continuing to release inflammatory markers because they're triggered for some reason such cells that are aggressively working will also have their function reduced because they do not have enough energy and nutrients available to continue to do their aggressive behavior so what happens is according to the researchers so back to the study the link is in the description according to the researchers what happens is that when the body is in a fasting starving state our cells have to decide which cells are going to go away and it is not that they would go in a conference hall and they'll say okay which cell is going to live and which is going to die the cells that are damaged these cells would need more energy to build themselves and now there is no energy and they're going to perish then those cells that are active and aggressive they also need a lot of energy and when they don't get an energy either they have to become okay or they would die because they their needs are not met so those cells that are damaged or those cells that are unnecessary they will be cleared out this is a hugely beneficial outcome glucose and fat stores are used up does that mean and what is the function of that when those stores are used up then the immune cells are not going to get nutrients from anywhere because body is not mobilizing those very much so of course we are mobilizing them to an extent we are living we after fasting we continue to operate but the supplies have really dwindled and the priority is to brain and to um, heart and kidneys and muscles muscle and brain first so it's not that every cell can get their energy as they were getting before so now a little more technical part fasting reduces the pka enzyme phosphokinase a or cyclo cyclic amp dependent phosphokinase what is that it is an enzyme present in the cells and its job it is a phosphokinase its job is to help with the cells homeostasis and breaking down of proteins and so on the pka levels go down when we fast and those levels go down the stem cells in the bone marrow their pka genes will open up because they they have less pka the result is that these gene expressions give a go ahead to stem cell to say you start dividing this is sort of a signal so pka level when it goes down because of fasting that triggers the stem cells in the bone marrow to make more cells so fasting is not only that you don't give food to cells and those cells would recycle it is also triggering mechanisms to build new cells make new cells so pka is one enzyme 
The second is insulin-like growth factor one. What happens is when we eat food, our food eating will cause growth hormone to be released. That growth hormone is going to work on liver to release insulin-like growth factor one. This hormone, in turn, works almost on every cell. And this is an anabolic hormone. That means it helps to build things. Catabolic hormones are the ones that help to break down things. IGF's function is to help build things. And what happens is, if there are aggressive immune system cells, they will be duplicating and replicating. And this enzyme would come in because of food, and there will be nutrients, and this enzyme is going to say, all right, guys, duplicate yourself, increase your number. We have food, go ahead. And now the unnecessary cells, aggressive cells, unnecessarily active cells will actually increase in number. And that problem would continue to increase. So that doesn't mean IGF is bad in every case. I'm talking about IGF with somebody who is sick or has an autoimmune relapse or inflammatory uh, spell. Otherwise, normally when we eat food, IGF is released, it goes to every cell, says here's your food, and then it tells them to grow and, and increase in number. It is especially very important for kids. So it's a good hormone, but the same hormone can become a problem when we are sick, with, especially with the immune problems. So reduced IGF-1 in turn reduces the cell aging. The more the cells work and replicate, the more we age, because the, the telomerase theory um, is different discussion we can have. So aging reduces. Tumor progression reduces. So when we eat food and the IGF-1 is produced, IGF is going to go to everywhere, including tumor cells, and say, grow. And here is food. Food is coming. It's on its way. You guys grow. And what would happen is tumor would progress. So if IGF-1 is less, and the tumor growth is reduced as well. Cancer risk. So the same researchers that did this study, they also did another study about the risk of cancer and the fasting. And they found that fasting, intermittent fasting, reduces or prolonged fasting, various kinds of fastings, reduces the risk of cancer as well. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Now I want to go to a little more detail for how autophagy works. What happens when the cell eats its own organelle? And I want to show you a couple of things here. First of all, the definition of autophagy. There has been a long discussion and debate that what is autophagy? So here there is def definition. So healthcare related folks, students or professionals might find this interesting to read that what is autophagy. I'll just give you a quick note for what they're saying what is autophagy. So here, let's say there is a cell. In this cell, things can come in from outside. Correct? So for example, a virus can come in. And the virus can be picked up or a bacteria can be picked up, phagocytosed, and then that vesicle which contains the virus, is then merged with the lysosome, which is, you can say, the stomach of a cell. It has the enzymes to break things. And then they are combined together. This makes phagolysosome. And the virus is killed or, or destroyed. So here, the material came from outside. Similarly, there can be other materials, other things that can come from outside. And so this is phagocytosis. This is uh, eating and then phagolysosome means breaking it down. There is also pinocytosis. Pinocytosis means a smaller chunk of things picked up from outside. So pinocytosis is drinking by the cell, pinocytosis. And phagocytosis is eating by the cell. So if the cell picks up something from outside in a bigger chunk, that is phagocytosis. If it just takes a tiny pinch of something from outside, that is pinocytosis. However, if the cell makes a tiny vesicle 
from the material that is already present in the cell, then this process will be called, if it goes through the whole process of then picking up things and breaking them down, this would be called autophagy. Autophagy has another very interesting thing that this vesicle that is formed inside is double membraned or double layered like our cell membrane. Normally the vesicles inside the cell are single layered. This will be double layered. That is another unique thing about this. And then of course this will combine with the lysosome as well and then the digestion of the material would occur. That process of connecting a vesicle, vesicle is a small pocket of thing that has some, some material in it, combining a vesicle to a lysosome. Lysosome is enzymes, digestive enzymes of the cell, stomach of the cell. When they're combined together and then the, the material is broken down, that mechanism is common for, for pinocytosis, phagocytosis and, and the autophagy as well. But where the material comes from is different. So that is what they have attempted to discuss and that is the definition they have tried to make. So then this is another study that is very interesting. Intermittent fasting, a possible priming tool for host defense against SARS-CoV-2 infection. So they talked in context of SARS-CoV-2, but generally uh, autophagy is an interesting part in here to look at. So this, this part. So I'm going to explain this for a second. So here is what happens. We are fasting, we don't have food, our immune system cells say, please give us food, and they don't get the food. The result is, within them, autophagy starts. Meaning they say, all right, I need to pick up something from my, within me and eat that up. So how does that autophagy start? What happens is, there is this mTOR enzyme inside the immune system, oh sorry, inside the cell, not just the immune system cell, all cells. This is usually present in combination with another protein complex called ULK. So during the fasting, these two enzymes separate from each other. Their separation allows the ULK to become active. An active ULK would initiate the autophagy mechanism. So that is one mechanism that is triggered with fasting. The second mechanism is that when we fast within the cell AMP, AMPK, proteins become enabled as well. They also get triggered when the nutrient levels in the cell are reduced. Our cells are sophisticated universes. They have internal sensors for almost everything their structure, their heat, their shape, and then their nutrient levels, their calcium levels, and so on. So they have a lot of sensors in them. So if the nutrient levels are low, AMPK goes and activates ULK. Once again, when ULK complex of enzymes or proteins is activated, that would start autophagy. Then a third mechanism is that there is another complex of proteins called Becklin complex. Becklin complex, when becomes activated as well, that would also cause ULK to become active. Now, Becklin complex is also activated by low nutritional levels or low food and energy availability. So all of these things would eventually cause the ULK complex to become active. So this is what's happening when a cell is hungry. This is like us, when we are hungry and we don't get the food, we're going to eat up things from which, whichever are inside of us. So here, the cell is starting the process of saying, I'm going to eat something within myself. So ULK becomes started. This is called autophagy initiation step. When ULK is started, it starts another complex that is called ATG complex. It activates that. When ATG complex is activated, that starts the formation of the phagosome, the, the internal phagosome, which is called phagophore. It's not called phagosome, just so that the, the names are different. Phagophore. Phagophore 
has double mem double layered membrane it is formed inside the cell where is it formed it is formed next to the material that it is going to eat up so <laughs> imagine in the cell so the cell doesn't have food nothing is coming from outside there is no food there is no supplies cell is scratching its head saying what the heck should i do now and then various enzymes become active and when they become active there is a message going on to say start eating up things so imagine there is a uh, extra material some material present i'm going to use spike protein as an example or some other bacterial pieces or something is sitting in the cytoplasm even cells own organelle cell can eat them just like we can eat our own fats and we can eat our own muscles uh, in really bad states so the phago four actually builds right next to the thing it's going to eat so this is like you you slowly go to the place to the thing that you're going to eat and just stand next to it and then you wait for the signal and you eat it so phago four is formed near the material that will be tagged to be eaten up and when the phago four further grows it would engulf that material now this is called autophagosome normally when we have phagocytosis when we pull something from outside that is called a phagosome here it is not called a phagosome it is called an autophagosome it is a phagosome it is an eaten up thing but that thing is auto that is us that is part of the cell itself just like autoimmune means our immune system's response within us bad response here autophagosome means we made a phagosome it has material to be destroyed but that material was actually part of the cell or it was picked up from within the cytoplasm a viral debris is not part of the cell but it is present in there so it is picked up now this autophagosome is then combined with lysosome lysosomes i've made some red ones over here sorry about this little thing i've made some lyg- lysosomes here these lysosomes are just sitting around they are little pockets spheres balls that are filled with digestive enzymes so when the phagosome is formed that phagosome is then combined with the lysosome and lysosome will empty its digestive enzymes in the phagosome and it's going to break down the things inside the phagosome done those broken down things are then come out and these are smaller nutrients and these can be eaten up by the cell the cell can use these as fuels to make energy for itself that's that's very cute but there is another issue here so let me just quickly create however there is an interesting thing that's going to happen when the cell is going to start recycling its own internal materials there is a natural process that during the recycling when things are broken down the normally this happens in the endosomes as well then those things are presented on the cell surface as well this is a normal natural behavior of the cell so think about it with me for a second imagine that there is a little thing debris trash that is hiding inside the cell the person the human that owns the cell decided to do fasting this cell went into the crisis state and said all right i'm going to eat things from within me now this little thing that was hiding in it it was hiding in a way that the cell was not able to digest and present it outside through its normal mechanisms so it was just sitting in there now this crisis state is started and the cell is saying pick up everything and just digest everything this guy gets trapped as well it gets destroyed and it gets presented outside so guess what 
all of a sudden, this thing that may have been sitting inside the cell bothering it is now presented outside and the immune response will start. This cell may actually be killed as a result of finding out that there is something bad sitting in there. This may be a cancerous material in there. Bad protein and misfolded protein, a, a debris from some virus, some bacteria. And this was not getting shown outside. Imagine if this was a cancer cell. Cancer cells are experts to hide their, their badness by not showing these proteins on the outside. Although they can, they can actually let the proteins be on, on the outside and they can still turn off the other cells. So again, without going into the details of that, at a high level, let's say there is a cancerous bad protein in here. Is folded bad that is now going to be projected outside don't you think that presentation of the material within the cell is now going to be on the outside that would give the immune system a chance the remaining cells a chance to inspect it and if this cell is found to have something bad in it they're going to kill it this is how damaged bad cells are removed when we do fasting or potentially removed this is how material that would not normally become available on the surface will become available on the surface because we triggered it by saying to the cell that show everything, eat everything and in that process it shows everything as well. So what are the results of this thing, this, um, these mechanisms? Of course, the recycling of the damaged proteins any damaged protein inside the cell would be recycled. Picking of any viruses or other viral um, debris that is present will be broken. If virus, normally viruses, what they do is when they come in the cell, they know that the cell would start the process of phagolysosome formation. It would try to capture the virus and, and even capture the virus from outside and kill them. So virus tries to block the virus, bacteria, other fungi. They try to, <coughs> excuse me, not all of them, but some of them, they try to turn off these processes. But now the person fasted. That caused an extra mechanism to trigger the process of trashing the material. And we overcome what virus was trying to turn off. Then this mechanism improves the antigen presentation as I just discussed. And this helps present endogenous antigens to the outside. Endogenous antigens means what? Those things that are produced inside the cell. These are endogenous to the cell. For example, cancer proteins. We force them to be presented outside. Then this, you would love this. These are last, last points and then we stop promotes T helper 1 pathway. So the enzymes that become active, the, the mechanisms that start as a result of fasting, they promote T helper 1 pathway over T helper 2 pathway. And we know this, if I just very quickly draw this over here, this is the innate arm. We know over here, dendritic cell, macrophages, neutrophils, NK cells, correct? Then the professional antigen presenting cells, for example, dendritic cell, macrophages, they will present. B cells are also pro professional, but they are in the acquired arm. We're talking innate arm. So now what would happen is they'll present the antigen to the T cells, help, right? So naive helper T cells. Naive helper T cell in the presence of interleukin-12 goes to T helper 2 pathway, which would then go to cytotoxic CD8 positive pathway and activate the cytotoxic T cells. The T helper 1 pathway is naive T cell can become T helper 1 in the presence of interleukin 4 and absence of interleukin 12. And now it is going to become T helper 1. And T helper 1 would release interleukin 4 and 5 and 10 and 6. And what happens is B cell would then become converted into a plasma cell and make antibodies. And we know that sometimes antibodies become a problem. They produce autoimmune diseases sometimes, not every time, and they can create, they can take part in the cytokine storms. They can become autoantibodies. 
So sometimes it is actually good not to go this pathway. And guess, how do you promote this pathway? Intermittent fasting promotes tea helper one pathway and suppresses tea helper two. Did I write the correct ones? So this is tea helper two. I sometimes just do this silly thing. This is tea helper one and this is tea helper two. So this pathway is promoted and the other pathway is not promoted, which happens, which means antibody production is reduced. So we are still fighting maybe cancer or autoimmune disease or pathogen or whatever we're fighting, but we are saying, hey, more cytotoxic T cells and less antibodies. And then there are lots more mechanisms on um, immune system. For example, the fasting helps with the B cell proliferation or their growth. It helps with the correct interleukin production. It actually reduces interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 6, human necrosis factor alpha. These are all pro-inflammatory uh, <laughs> cytokines. It reduces them. So it actually restores. It doesn't suppress the immune system. It doesn't elevate the immune system. It actually starts removing the damaged parts and building or triggering, it triggers to build the good new cells and bring homeostasis to the homeostasis to the immune cells. So th this is the discussion. There is fascinating uh, discussion here. So if you keep going, um, there's a lot more um, data there. Then here, IGF-1 and PKA, which I described how that works. Then here is this saying no to drugs, fasting protects them. So again, please remember, you don't start fasting by yourself. Do not stop any drugs, especially in the cancers and others. This is a discussion to have with the doctor. My job was to explain the mechanism. So you can, you can understand what happens. It's not, I am not advising to stop or start. So please speak with the doctor. Then this is autophagosomes are formed in anyways. So this is the discussion of intermittent fasting, especially in context of the immune system and cancers and immune system dysregulation. So now, if I said that someone who may have, let's say, an S1 part of the protein stuck somewhere in a monocyte, if they did an intermittent fasting, it, there may be a help there. I'll give you one story. One of my family members recently became sick with the... Uh, so she started fasting. And I said, why are you fasting? And she said, it makes me feel better. My inflammation is reduced. And so every time she would feel that there is a relapse, she would start fasting. And the way she thought was that carbohydrates are pro-inflammatory and I'm reducing the carbohydrate intake and that is reducing the inflammation. As you can see from the mechanisms here, that there are actually much more mechanisms involved than just reducing the carbohydrate levels in the body. So that is the discussion. Very, very interesting. I hope you enjoyed it too. Uh, now at the end of this, um, please like, subscribe and share. That is the easiest help you can do for this channel. And if you would like to support further, one way is to actually not even support and get advantage and take drbean.com uh, access to 1,000 lectures. There is a link in the description and you can get them at a very affordable price. So you can take advantage of that. Or you can support it with PayPal or with Buy Me A Coffee or with by becoming a patron. I really hope that patrons and substacks they increase so that I can slowly wean away from dependency with YouTube. So with this, thank you very much. I will now go to the chit chat channel in another five, 10 minutes and we'll meet there. So let me quickly put the channel link here.
this is the link and i'll see you soon bye bye for now